Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel and the same purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are opinions of creators only and do not constitute legal training, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and it is CPI day today. So we are going to get some numbers and they're going to be interesting. For me personally, I'm going to be most interested in seeing exactly what happens here, right? I want to know, is this divergence going to continue between Trueflation and the US government reported rate? Are we going to get a hot CPI print? You know, are we going to see a higher CPI readout from the US government whilst this continues lower? Or is this going to start to reflect sticky inflation? The big thing I'd be really interested to note is if CPI actually comes down and if the government actually report a number that comes lower, I think that would surprise most people. It would certainly fit my bias and my narrative. But overall, it is just going to be ultimately another case of taking the data as it comes, seeing how it impacts the probabilities of seeing cuts as early as June or July. So I'll be looking to see how these reprice, if at all. And as if that's not good enough for all of us, we've also got the FOMC meeting minutes coming out later today as well. So quite a busy day, probably going to be a lot of volatility, probably going to be a lot of games as always around CPI and FOMCs. And as always, my plan is going to be to pretty much just stay out of the way of the markets, let the dust settle, let the market reveal the true direction tomorrow. And then we will take it from there as always one day at a time. So normally what we would expect is if CPI comes in hot, that is to say if the print that is revealed or released, I should say, today is above that of the last month's print, then we would expect stocks to go down. And inversely, if the CPI were to come in below the last readout indicating a decline in inflation, then we would probably expect the stock market to go up. The cycles, however, are all saying that we probably go down across the board. So we're seeing this for the S&P 500. We're due a cycle low somewhere around the 19th, if I've got the count correct. We're also due a gold cycle low somewhere around the 22nd. And interestingly enough, Bitcoin's half cycle low also happens to be right around the 20th. So from a cycle count perspective, this implies to me personally, based on my experience of trading cycles, that we're either going to get a hot CPI print or at least a pullback over the next two weeks, perhaps even a negative reaction to a sticky print or even a cold print, right? The cycles say that the market's going to find a narrative to append to a dip that is going to continue to play out over the next couple of weeks until we get to these sort of 20th neighborhood of this month. And then based on my cycle experience, based on the cycle counts that I have here, I would think something occurs somewhere around these dates that makes all three bottom on the same day. So again, it's funny because every dip has its narrative, right? The cycle lows serve to flush the sentiment and it doesn't matter what the news is, the market will interpret it as bullish or bearish depending on what the cycles say. But like I say, the cycles are telling us to expect a bit of downside for a week or two and that something is gonna to occur to make all three of these bottom right around the same time. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we can find some kind of catalyst, perhaps an excuse for the market to append to cause some upside in the, all of these assets right around the 20th. If anyone knows of anything that's coming out around the 20th, let me know. It'd be interesting to see if we can try to read the tea leaves, so to speak. If we look at the S&P on a weekly chart, Bob here is pointing out that we typically would get a 6 to 8% weekly cycle decline, right? So you've got a nice short opportunity here, according to Bob. So I personally am not of the opinion we're going to get as deep as 6 to 8% like is typical with a weekly cycle decline. And the reason I say that is because I think we're in the middle of this blow off top. I think we're going to set a second angle, which will end up being shorter, shallower than the 6 to 8% that we typically see for the S&P. And thus, we will end up having some kind of shallower pullback into a weekly cycle low and a daily cycle low due soon, followed by this blow off top moment. And I suspect by the end of July or into August, we're going to be looking at a very, very different set of conditions. Let's just say that. Of course, we certainly could see some kind of steeper pullback, right? We certainly could see this typical 6 to 8% followed by some kind of resumption like this. And ultimately, it wouldn't change much. We'd just redraw the trend lines in a slightly different angle. But as you can see, the weekly cycle and the daily cycle counts are both down in the short to medium term. Bob also showing here that we may well have to entertain this 60-day consolidation cycle before we can move higher. Like I said earlier, 
right around the middle here happens to be that half cycle low, which happens to coincide with the expected daily cycle low for gold and for the stock market. So I wonder if we're going to get some kind of weird cycle that looks like this. This is what I wonder into that next daily cycle low and off we go. If this was to occur, it wouldn't be illegal or outside of the possible realms of cycle theory, but it would be something that I haven't seen very often from Bitcoin. And here's the look for gold, right? So we are currently on day 17 of an expected 22 to 24-ish day cycle. So I would think something happens in the not too distant future that causes this daily cycle to top. We get some kind of pullback, whether it's to this blue support line here and then a bounce or whether we have to come all the way down to this red one before we bounce. Either way, like I said, we are getting late in the daily cycle. As I've been saying over and over again, I think the dips are for buying. And again, it's another piece of confluence in terms of the cycle count that suggests something is going to occur right around the 20th ish of this month to cause everything to bottom together and start to launch much higher. So going to be interesting to see what happens with CPI. Like I said, cycles tell us to expect some downside or that any pump today that we see will probably be reversed tomorrow. That's at least what the cycles say. As ever, we'll take it one day at a time and I will continue to be looking for some kind of catalyst that the market can append to these cycle lows that set us up for that big rally in a couple of weeks time. And if you disagree with this whole idea that we are gonna see a deflationary bust and we're gonna go into negative CPI, that is absolutely fine. And that also probably means you are more on Raoul Paul's side of the fence, which is while everyone is worried about three and a half percent inflation, the real issue is the ongoing 8% per annum debasement of currency on top of inflation. So your hurdle rate to break even happens to be around 12% at the moment, which is the 10 year average return on the S&P 500. And you need that just to keep your purchasing power. And you can see here, this is the GMI Global Liquidity Index growing at 8% annualized. So you can choose your side. Are you in this camp of people that thinks liquidity is going up forever, debasement's going up forever, and thus assets are going up forever? Or are you in this camp of people that thinks something snaps, something breaks, and something forces a recession and asset price deflation somewhere in the not too distant future? I, at the moment, have to stand with my original hypothesis, which is that we continue to put in a blow off top and I have never personally seen a parabola not be violated to the downside. As ever, I am open to being proven wrong. I am open to being invalidated. But if we continue up in a parabola, then I have to only accept that I thought we would enter a parabola and we're still in a parabola. And thus, I would have to stand with my hypothesis that that parabola will eventually break to the downside. That's what parabolas do. And at least according to this one fractal, Bitcoin might even be potentially thinking about leading. This may even be a little bit of a fake out. We've seen this once before, right? We had this ABC correction, a rally, some kind of triangle compression, a fake breakout, a rounded, and then off we went. And that's exactly what we've got, right? This ABC, we've got this breakout, compression into a triangle, a fake breakout, pot potentially going to round off into that half cycle low over the next two weeks before off we go. So going to be interesting to see if that's what plays out for Bitcoin. Like I said, until this parabola is violated before even setting the third and final angle, all the while this continues to play out roughly as expected, then I have to continue to accept this as the base case. The same is true for me and Bitcoin, right? All the while this thing does not start to spend months going sideways or break down, I have to assume that I am still correct. We've already set the first, second, and potentially even the third angle. Maybe this will need readjusting a little bit once we have revealed the direction. And we always have to be open to setting a fourth angle along the way, more vertical. But again, if we continue to put in these parabolas, if we continue to move higher, then I have to continue to accept the base case hypothesis, which is that we will probably get a top that forms this year rather than the end of next year like everyone else is expecting. Gold is still bullish as a son of a gun. If I put this into log, I've got this really interesting fractal. I wanna know if this is what plays out. I wanna know if we get this pullback daily cycle low, another high, and then something break, okay? <laughs> something calls a panic sell off, some kind of event that causes everything to tank into that next weekly cycle low. So according to this fractal, it'll be somewhere in this neighborhood. And then gold is gonna enter the serious portion of the bull market. Other than that, as I said, Still looking for this trend line not to be broken, still looking for some kind of decline into a daily and weekly cycle low for the stock market. And hopefully if we can get that, we've got some nice trades set up. We should be going vertical thereafter. Happy days. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on the charts since they don't really matter, right? They don't matter because it's CPI. We'll let the volatility sort itself out today. We'll come back tomorrow, deep dive on the weekend as always. For now, I just have to continue to take it one day at a time. It's hard for me to say any of my ideas have been invalidated yet. As ever, I'm open to them being invalidated. I would actually rather be invalidated on the left translated Bitcoin cycle top idea. I would much rather get a right translated cycle top as it will make life so much easier to deal with. It will make me so much more confident that I can actually sell the top of a right translated cycle. 
left translated cycles, as I say over and over again, they're difficult to identify, they're difficult to deal with, we'll have to get a reallocation after I sell, lower down, not knowing whether that is going to fail and be stopped out or whether we're going on to a double pump and a right translated cycle. I'll have to do this as a content creator this time with the added pressure of doing it live. And if we were to get a double pump into a right translated cycle, I'd also have to deal with a bunch of people saying, ha, I told you so, nothing was ever different. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. It's going to be fun. It's certainly going to be fun. Like I said, for now, let's just take it one day at a time. Let the dust settle for a couple of days. I'll update you on the CPI data and we'll have a look at and stuff. Other than that, I hope you're doing well in life. I'm going to take my dog to the beach for the day. Until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.